G'day, welcome to the channel, it's James here, and today we're checking out the Skyfan DC. It's a DC type ceiling fan that comes in a range of different sizes and colors, with and without a light, and most importantly, it's super easy to connect to Home Assistant. All you have to do is plug this little device in, enter your Wi-Fi details, and bam, you're connected. You're all ready to go. So if you want to see how this little device came to be, if you want to um, see if the fan's any good, and how you can get one of these if you want one as well, then stick around. Okay, so the new fan is ready to put up, and the fan is a Ventair Skyfan DC. And it's got three blades, it's white, and it's a 1200 millimeter fan, or 48 inch. And it comes in lots of different sizes, and also it comes in black as well as white. So it comes with this remote here, and you can also get a wall remote, and as I said, the little add-on that connects it to, to ya. So hopefully that's gonna be work with our home assistant. We're gonna find out. Okay, so I can say that at this point that that little Tuya add-on module, which is about 50 bucks to buy, works perfectly with the app, but does not work with any of the Home Assistant integrations because of the way that this particular fan handles the fan speeds. I will say that perhaps it might change in the future, but not at the moment, And but that's okay because I've got another way and it's gonna be easier, so that's better. So this is our fan here. So I'll just start assembling that and put it together. Okay, so this fan is all wide now, it's very simple. I do find it quite strange that they will go to the effort of having these no screw terminals so it's easier to stick the wires in and then have no terminal for the earth at all. Okay, so this is the fan controller that comes in the box with the fan and you can place the module, the two-year module, in here. Now this two-year module comes with a USB type plug on it. I wouldn't plug it in to a USB because it'll either die or not work. When I looked at the diagram for this thing here, it looks like it get, feeds three volts into this little device to power the ESP. So I suspect that it would die if you plugged it into a computer or USB port. But before putting the two-year module in, I thought in true fashion I'd open it up and look inside and see what we've got. So this is a lot different to a normal fan speed controller, a remote control one. And it's got a power module here. So that basically takes the mains voltage and drops it down to 24 volts DC. And this is isolated, so this is an isolated supply. And so we have safely isolated um, 24 volt DC over here, and that actually runs the fan. So it's got the wife, um, the radio frequency for the remote, and then the two year module plugs in there. We've got a beeper to make some beeps. And we've got some MOSFETs around here to run the fan, which must run on 24 volts DC. Um, that must be to control the speed of the fan. So uh, this comes with a, a light version too. So it can actually get a light built into the fan and that would obviously run on 24 volts DC as well and use some sort of MOSFET to dim the light. So our fan controller is installed. It was quite simple. In fact, the whole fan really is quite simple to assemble and to put together. And it has no screws here to put it on. You simply push it up and lock it in. This inductor does seem to take up a lot of space, but it looks like it'll tuck up into there. So let's just put the cover on and we can try it out. And this is the remote for the fan. Now I've just discovered that if you don't get a fan with a light, you actually don't get a remote that can control the light. So that's a little bit disappointing because I was hoping to use the light button to turn on the lights in my bedroom, um, but that's not there. So uh, this is how the fan works anyway. You can turn it on and change the speed like so. And you can also change the direction of the fan using this button here. It is quite quiet, but it makes a different noise to the one I had before. I think that would be because of the shape of the blades. The other fan makes a different, like an electrical noise, whereas this makes a noise of the blade passing through the air. It will be different. If you like the sound of the hum of your fan, it's gonna change to a swish instead. Okay, so we've finished installing the fan and we've got it up there. So that's what it looks like. Looks quite good, I think. And the only problem I have with this fan that you might not like as well is that up here is a little gap around the ceiling. And now that's just the way that it's designed. So you don't have screws in there, so you can't push it right up hard against the ceiling. Now, that's, the other fans are like that, but the only problem is it's quite large. And so if the ceiling isn't perfectly flat, you get a little bit of variation in the gap. Now, if that fan was black, 
you'd have no problem at all. So I'll show you one on the screen now of a black fan with the same setup and you can't even see that there's a gap there. But with white, it sort of does stand out a little bit. But it's not the end of the world. It also has quite a long uh, post coming down from the ceiling, the rod, fan rod. But it would be possible to shorten that. You could cut it. I've done that before. It doesn't take too long if you wanted this fan to be a bit shorter. Um, so that's the fan. Okay, so I've been using this fan for a few months now and it does exactly what I expected it to do. It's a pretty decent fan. And I especially like how quick and easy it was to put together. Very simple compared to most fans. Also, it's got a super good range of different sizes and black and white and teak and with and without a light. And also the one with a light is actually a very, very slim line light. Um, so overall, I'd say it's a pretty decent fan. The only thing is that it claimed to use less power than it actually does. I found that it is not any more better from a power efficiency point of view than the AC ceiling fans that I have in other rooms, the early twos that which I use. So they're pretty much about the same. Um, they are supposedly supposed to use less power, but I haven't found that to be true at this point in time. Now, at this point, I also think that the two-year module is gonna work and connect to Home Assistant. I discovered that it, it won't, and I spent many, many days trying to figure out how I could get it to work. Eventually, I decided to do this. I've been trying to get this two-year Sky Fan, DC Sky Fan to work, and it's driving me crazy trying to set it up with the two-year integration. So I've just come to the conclusion, and I'm trying it out this morning. I can just flash Home ESP onto another module, and then swap it out for this one, and hopefully that'll work. Now this has got the, all this is, is the little plug that has the three volts and the ground, and the RX and TX. So with the two-year platform on Home ESP, that should work. So I'm gonna try that. So I ended up using one of these little modules instead. It actually fits better. It'll fit better onto this little board. And it's also easier too, because I've got the little flasher for it. So I can just plug it in, um, click flash, and off, I, off it goes. So I've flashed that one with the two-year module. Now we just have to solder it onto here. And then we can try it out and see if it works. Okay, so now in theory, we should just be able to put this into here, replace this little module and it should work with Home Assistant using Home ESP. And because it's, the remote is independent, I won't mess my wife up, she can still just use the remote as exactly as per normal. But this little module will hopefully connect our fan nicely to Home Assistant. So we get the best of both worlds. Let's plug it in and try it out. Okay, so I put the little module into my fan and hoped it would work, but I had exactly the same problem that I had with the two integration. It all came back down to the fact that the data point that the fan was expecting was an integer and both ESP Home and the two integrations in Home Assistant were all putting out enumerators because this fan is different, it's special. And it also has another little quirk that I found. It's actually got six speeds and not five speeds. Even though the remote has five speeds, the actual fan through the two-year module has six speeds. Um, speed one, it's not really used. It's like almost so slow that it's off. So they simply don't use it on the remote. So how do we get around this little problem? Well, I've sort of been poking around. I'm not a coder. It's not, not my thing. But I've managed to modify it sufficiently in the home ESP that I could get it to work correctly and properly. And if you want to get that um, code for home ESP, then look down in the descriptions and it'll be down um, on my GitHub site. So you can grab it there and um, you can just flash one of these modules if you've already got one. Now it's important to note that this little add-on that I've made um, will not work with to your Smart Life app. So if you have one of these um, modules that came with the fan and you reflash it or you change it or you get one of these modules here, it won't work with the to your Smart Life app at all. It will only work with ESP Home and with Home Assistant, which in my case is fine, I'm fine with that. Um, but I just wanna make sure that that's clear, that it only works with Home Assistant. Um, and it worked really well, like it was super cool, like it was, I thought it was easy because you could just plug it straight in. And because I'm flashing it myself, I've got my Wi-Fi details actually already on there. But if you were to get one of these pre-flashed, then you could simply use the captive portal to enter your Wi-Fi details. And I thought I should make an actual little module so that's what we're going to do now. 
Okay, so it turns out it's actually gonna be super easy to do this in Easy EDA and make the file. So basically all it is, is the USB connector and the module, the um, ESP module, and I've just got a little pad that goes in the, on the circuit board so that I can like put a solar dab on there and um, flash it and then when it's done I can like wipe it off. And of course it's easy to flash because we're actually using the RX and TX lines. So we can just plug that into a flasher and it's gonna be like super easy to flash it with the home ESP. And then the RX and TX becomes the communication line to talk to the fan. Um, so that's the most simple diagram ever. And then this is the PCB layout. And of course I've got it panelized. So we've got 16 on one little panel and it's got no gap in between the panels and it's a V cut. So we should be able to snap out 16 boards off that little panel there. As you can see, it um, fits on there nicely, on that little board. And of course, probably more useful is the 3D model. So that's a little um, board. So you can just grab this. And if you wanna get one of these for your fan, like if you're, or you're gonna get some fans, or you've already got a fan and you want it to work, and you just wanna grab one of these, it's my design files are available so you could make it yourself but it's actually probably easier and cheaper if you just went to um, my website and you can buy it pre-made plug it into your fan enter the captive portal put your wi-fi details in and home assistant will automatically find it even if you don't have esp home running on your system it'll still find it and connect your fan up to home assistant so that was a uh, super easy um, I hope this video was helpful and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and if you want to see more videos about home automation and electrical installations and um, smart tech gear, um, then please subscribe for more. Alright, catch you later. Bye.